respected Chief Minister of Gujarat, Sri Modi Sahib, <coughs> Sri Mankad Sahib, former Chief Secretary, distinguished guests sitting on the dais, my colleagues from the government, eminent citizens of Ahmedabad, the management experts, professors from Indian Institute of Management, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a matter of great privilege for me today that my first book on human resource management is released today by none other than the Chief Minister himself. <coughs> In fact, I truly owe this endeavor to him for two reasons. The first reason is that when I returned from my study at Indian Institute of Management Bangalore in the year 2003, and when I was posted straight away in the Chief Minister's office, I found in him a person who had a deep insight into the human factor in management, and also a person who was completely receptive to new ideas on modern management. The second reason is that on my request, he gave me an additional charge of the Department of administrative reforms and training, and also the charge of Director General of SPIPA. And not only that, he allowed me complete flexibility in whatever I was trying to do in this area for a period of full three years. It is because of these two factors that we were able to implement some new initiatives in the field of human resource management in the government, which probably made it possible and which prompted me to write this book today. Thank you very much, sir, for both these reasons. Friends, according to me, the only way to bring about good governance in the country is through proper understanding of the need for human resource management in government. Please pardon my saying this, but unfortunately, there is a complete neglect sound to this subject, not only by the practical administrators, but also by the academicians. Although 68% of the total workforce in the organized sector is either from the government or the public sector, we find very little research and books on the subject. You would all agree that the challenges involved in making a government employee work are quite tough and very different from the challenges of a private sector. It is in this context that I have tried to write this book based on some sound empirical research which is done by me as well as by the government of Gujarat. One such research was undertaken by me personally as has been mentioned by the previous speaker when I was studying at IIM Bangalore in which I did a survey of 400 government employees, 200 from the state government, 200 from the central government in Karnataka. And the results of this survey, as well as the results of the survey, the employee opinion poll, which was done in Gujarat, it was popularly called Karma Yogi Sarvabhi Prai. It was an opinion poll to get the opinion of employees about their job satisfaction and motivational factors. So this is the second survey which I'm referring to. And the results emerging out of these two surveys are quite interesting for all the policy makers of the country. And we really need to highlight those results for the entire country. And this is the attempt that I have tried to make in this book, trying to highlight the findings of the survey and the policy implications emerging out of these two surveys. Now let us for a moment look at these figures. Please listen to these figures. If about 200,000 crores, 2 lakh crores of rupees are spent annually by the state and the central government both on the salaries of government employees. 2 lakh crore rupees are spent. This comes to an average of about 1.5 lakh to 2 lakh rupees per employee per year. As against this, we have to admit that there is a lot of scope for improving the productivity of this huge expenditure. There's a lot of scope there. But unfortunately, the amount spent on imparting training to employees in the entire country is not even 0.2% of this particular figure. Not even 0.2%. No wonder the government employees face the flack of being underperformers 
and negative in their attitude. It is in this context that we need to invest our time and resources in changing the mindset of government employees, particularly at the lower level. Ladies and gentlemen, the V governance training in Gujarat was the first such massive attempt in the country to touch the hearts of the employees and make them feel that they are also important stakeholders in the process of the development of this country. About 2.19 lakh employees were covered by this training of 20 hours. Of course, 3 lakh teachers were separately covered in a different program. But other than teachers, 2.19 lakh employees were covered in this program. And as has been mentioned, only an amount of rupees 250 per employee was spent on this program. Only 250. And that also for the first time in the career of many employees. This 250 was also spent on the career of, uh, first time for the, in the career of many employees. Even then, as indicated by the independent impact study which is done by an agency, the program created a wave of enthusiasm among the employees. But is this once in a lifetime exercise enough? Certainly not. All of you would agree that this is certainly not enough. There is a constant need for training of each and every government employee at least once in a year. And such training cannot always be centrally arranged. We cannot look up to the SPIPA only to make arrangement for such massive training every time, every year. The best way is for the departmental and the head of the office to take up the responsibility of training his or her own employees. That is the best way. If we are spending about rupees 1.5 lakh on each employee's salary, if we add simply rupees 1,000 or 2,000 per year to it by way of training expenditure, it may really help a lot in improving the productivity. This is the realization that I want to bring to the people who are in government and who are also in charge of policy. I would therefore request through this forum today, since large number of my senior colleagues are also here, I would therefore request all my colleagues present here to make a beginning in this. My request is that let us not be preoccupied with only framing of programs and policies and instead let us be fully aware of the human factor involved in the effectiveness of delivery mechanism. This is very, very important, the human factor. And we have to arise, uh, awake and take up this challenge of human resource in the government. And that's the only way to bring good governance, according to me. Unless you touch the hearts of the people, unless you change their paradigms, unless you train them, unless you are in constant dialogue, dialogue with your employees, no good governance can be brought about. I'm indeed thankful to the Honorable Chief Minister and other dignitaries for their presence and for their kind words. I'm also grateful to all my senior colleagues and prominent citizens of Ahmedabad who are present here today in large numbers. Before I end, I must thank my wife Meera and my son Vaibhav for being supporting in whatever uh, I desire to do in life, including publishing this book. My special thanks to Mr. Sarnikar, Mr. Rajshekar and Mr. Balabhaskaran of ICFI for publication of this book and for arranging this function. Thank you all. Namaste. Thank you very much.